Good afternoon. This is a, a quick look at uh, aluminium in cars yet again. Um, as you see, I, I come from Inval Technology, uh, which is an independent consultancy, so uh, my views are my own. And I fit between Inval Technology and Bruno University, so I spend a lot of time on the M40. Um, there appears to be an interest in cars that use less fuel, even in uh, even in the United States, as you can see, there are the sort of legislation is, 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 is heading in the same direction as the rest of the world. And there's a, there's a, there's a requirement for, for cars that, uh, that use much less fuel that gets more and more stringent as time goes on. So by 2020, we're looking to even have cars on the road that could drive with less than 90 grams of CO2 emitted per kilometre travel. Good deal. So that's, that's one of my favourite slides. This is my very favourite slide because it, uh, the more astute amongst you will probably notice there's a relationship between the weight of a car and the amount of fuel it consumes. So I'll leave you for a moment while you absorb that. <coughs> and, and you can also spot on there that, uh, that it, it, it's like a, a diesel vehicle is. is is, is better than a petrol driven vehicle. But it's, it's a very clear relationship between the, uh, the weight of a car and the amount of fuel it consumes. Just the same as there is with us. <laughs> it's, not, it's not clever, it's a thought. No. <laughs> probably, it's probably good for the after lunches. Um, and if you, uh, if you want to take it as far as uh, the Germans might, to the logical extreme, uh, Volkswagen have demonstrated that if you carry on taking the weight out, you carry on using less and less fuel. So if you take the weight down to something ludicrous, such as you can only cram a couple of small people into it, or midgets, the, um, you can get down to um, 27 grams of CO2 <coughs> per kilometre driven, just by taking the weight out. Nothing, uh, nothing fancier than that, advanced materials, and the, the problem with this is, of course, this is a route that uses very advanced materials. It uses a lot of carbon composites. It uses magnesium alloys. It uses lots of things that aren't practical in mass production <coughs> cars for costs and availability issues. So really, if you look at where could you go for a car that, uh, that we'd, we'd want in 2020, well, in 2002, you could have bought one. And this is, this is the little route. And it's an Audi A2, which is in its most energy efficient mode but version, which was a, an aluminium structured car with all the uh, other components downsized to take advantage of the lighter weight body. So this is a really nice little car that lived, lived from about 2002 to 2005 when it went out of production. Because there's lots of things that are wrong with it, it's, it's ugly, it's not built using the right mass production technology and it was too expensive to make and people didn't want it. Of course, it's, a, it's, 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 it's exactly the car that, that we're trying to get to by 2020. In fact, it's beyond the target in 2020. So, yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's interesting. But you can build cars like you can build steel cars from press components <coughs> using aluminium. And so Alcan ran the program with many uh, of the different car companies from 83 to 93 in particular, and showed that you could effectively replicate steel cars using aluminium, using the same build technologies. And get serious weight reduction, a lighter weight body, downsize the components, and by 1998, Ford had a, a vehicle which could have been a, a serious alternative to the Audi A2, but was never put into production. <coughs> This, this, is, this is a very interesting car because it's not only a, a drivable car, it's also one which could be styled to look better than that and could be properly acceptable. And, uh, and, 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 and also it's made using conventional vehicle production techniques. All you're effectively doing is, is replacing the steel with aluminium. So what's wrong with aluminium cars? And of course you can, you can go even further because these lightweight platforms are absolutely ideal either hybrid vehicles or electric vehicles. It almost makes no sense to take a conventional car and make it into a hybrid. 
or take a conventional car and make it into an electric vehicle. It's obvious that you should take the weight out and then do it. So then this, this was done again in the, between 1996 and 1999. And this, this is the electric driven version of the aluminum sensor vehicle, which was, was put on the market by GM. They never sold them, they only leased them. Then they took them all back and scrapped them. Um, again, I think the issue there was it was it was it was a very popular car in California. It was uh, it was probably too expensive for GM to put into large scale production. So rather than risk it, they uh, they scrapped it. But of course, depending on how you the, the uh, 